Hi there. We are about to show you the video that landed us a TV show. But first, we'd love to ask you to subscribe to our channel if you like what you see and click the bell for notifications. Thanks. Hi, the video you're about to see is one that we created when Nat Geo Wild reached out to us about a TV show. And it is the video that landed us our spot on the series When Nature Calls. They had asked us to answer a bunch of questions and send back the answers and also provide them with footage of us working in the field. So we did even better. We made a whole video of us working and answering the questions at the same time. <laughs> this entire video was one working day for us, which was a Friday. And I had it edited and into them by Monday after staying up two days straight. It was grueling, um, but they loved it. And the next day we got the good news that we had made the cut and it was all skunks and flowers from there. <laughs> so we hope that you enjoy this video as you ride along with us on a day in the life of suburban wildlife control. So I'd like to introduce ourselves. I'm Katie. And I'm Brad. And we are suburban wildlife control. We are a husband and wife team unlike any other. And this morning we actually started the day off separate because we had so many calls we needed to split some of them between the two of us. But now we're meeting up to work together the way we prefer. Plus it's much more fun. Not only that, but you get to see a couple of our best assets. Our sexy matching his and hers work trucks. Hi hon. Hey. How are your jobs? Just really super, super busy. I already filled the whole truck up, <laughs> top to bottom. I don't think I could squeeze another animal in that truck if I had to. Oh my goodness. How was the bat job? precarious <laughs> but I got it it was really weird because I felt odd being a girl getting the bat out when it was the guy who didn't want to touch it <laughs> I'm too afraid to touch it okay ready so I actually started out the company in uh, 1988 officially but I've been trapping uh, raccoons as a kid the way the whole thing started I was uh, trapping raccoons at a farm when I was probably seven or eight years old and the guy that owned the property said hey I'm going out of town can you keep an eye on some traps for me so I would go out every day and catch the raccoons and ride them on my handlebars on my bike and take them far away and let them go. Well, as years went on, I kept that going. And when I was 16 years old, I finally bought a car. And uh, obviously I needed gas money to get around, so people started paying me to come out and help out uh, with different animal problems they had. And they got bigger and bigger. Then when I was uh, 18, which is 1988, I said, hey, this is doing really well. And I was already making really good money and helping out a lot of people when I went full time with it doing it full-time since. And I grew up on a farm and I was all about wildlife. I spent all my days outdoors and I actually used to fashion traps out of buckets and clothes hanger wire and boxes and anything I could find so I could capture chipmunks and field mice and stuff like that just so I could observe them for a little while and then let them go. And when I met Brad it was like natural attraction. We were just meant to be. Let the animals go. Yeah, let's set those critters free. So you got so many animals, we actually have to let them go two times today. That's crazy. It's been busy. This is one of our release sites here. Oh, that one has me. So you got all of this before 10 a.m.? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I got that mom and babies out of an attic. This one came out of a chimney. This one came from under a deck. Uh, this one was outside terrorizing kids by a school ground, and that one I don't remember. But, and yeah. all I got was a bat. That yeah, bat's a little creepier for sure. I guess we'll just let these guys go and get back to work, huh? Okay. And I've got a hollow tree over here that I take the mom and babies into. It's just a kind of a temporary spot she can keep them overnight. So what we do on this, this tree is actually hollow, so she can go up, and I'm not sure how far it goes out, but she can only go up the tree, but she can't come back down again unless she sees her babies. So most of the time, when I put the mom inside, she'll come back down and start grabbing right out of my hand a lot of time. As aggressive as she is, she'll probably come down and just take them right out of my hand. Got this rigged up, so I let her go through this trap. She goes inside the hollow tree, and right up she goes. Let her go back in. Here, I'll, I'll keep them blocked in. You get them. Just keep shoving them in. That's a lot of raccoons to shove into a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, babies, go in there. That's fine. She'll grab them. Okay, good. Awesome. All right. You gotta get out of here like pretty quick. All right, let's go. All right, on to the next half. 
So now what? Now we are getting a bird out of your first trap, right? You said you were trapping chipmunks and a bird got in there? Yeah, I think that, the lady called and said it was a red bird, so I'm guessing it's probably a cardinal. So you cool. probably saw the peanuts and went after the peanut, which is unusual. I've never had that happen with a cardinal yet. They do love nuts. And so do you. <laughs> and that's why I love you. Because you're a nut. Are we going to get a lot of wind? Look at Oh, he's so pretty. It's a cardinal. Rex trying for chipmunks, but the cardinal came by, must have saw the peanuts in the thing, and went after the bait. So we're not trying to catch him, so we're going to let him go. Gags, here the mate is up in the tree over here someplace, chirping back at it. So I'm going to take him out and we'll let him go. <gasps> oh, look at it. Oh, he's, bite oh, he's biting hard. Oh, he's kind of mean. Ow, look at <laughs> Oh, Ow. poor baby. He's got stronger jaws than I thought. <gasps> wow, but they, ow, ow, they ow. crack those hard ah. walnuts and stuff. Yeah, I see that. <gasps> wow, he put a <laughs> well, dent. He's stronger than I thought. He put a dent in the finger there. Yeah, he sure is. Oh, he's so pretty. Look at it. Never actually held a cardinal before. It's the first one. No. It's coming to your nest. <laughs> we let him go. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, he's biting hard. <laughs> ow. Oops. That actually kind of hurts. <laughs> you can be ready to go back to your mate, huh? You want to go back to your nest? Oh, he's so ow. pretty. I want to pet him. Ow. Let him bite you one time. Uh-uh. No way. I don't have man hands like you. My hands are way well, more he's delicate. He's mean. Oh, I made this a state bird. He's too mean. Ow, let go. I'm pretty. You look like a cockatoo. All right, he's getting too pissed. Yeah, he's mad. All right, let's let him I'm go. bite himself. Oh, no, don't bite yourself, you silly. Bye-bye, <gasps> oh. Bye. bird. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be gentle. Let's see that again. Cool. <gasps> Bye bye bird. Wow, that was so cool. And we were trying to catch chipmunks. Now another thing I found yesterday is a nest of baby rabbits over here. And the lady said she doesn't want the babies on the property. But yesterday when I was here, every time I took the babies out, the mom would come charging. I don't see her today. But here's all the babies. So they're brand new, they're probably just maybe That's a boy. Two days old. Oh, that's a boy too. They should have more hair today than they did yesterday. Aww. Yesterday they were totally bald. They grow so fast. Within like Aww. three more weeks they'll be on their own. They're so sweet. Yeah. Let's put them back in. She lines her nest with her own fur. <coughs> oh, squeak, squeak. Come on, mother, where are you? She's not out today. They have fleas. Oh no, where? Just saw one jump off of me. Oh gosh, I hope it didn't jump off into my hair. It's probably in your hair. Oh no. I can okay. handle a flea, just don't give back me any. They go. No ticks. So, we'll be back in three weeks to move those guys out. As she said, they're eating all our landscaping and ate all our flowers. And so that's going to be eight less to eat all our plants and landscaping. All right, on to the next one. We deal with a lot of different species, but we mostly deal with raccoons, skunks, squirrels, and possums. And bats. And groundhogs. And everything else. <laughs> Beavers, coyotes, fox, birds. Flying squirrels. Muskrats. You name it. <laughs> snakes. Snapping turtles. Chipmunks, moles, hawks, owls. I love owls. Mink. Actually, mink are a favorite of mine. They have the most eerie scream. But well, beavers are so much fun. <laughs> I mean, wait. <laughs> <laughs> huh. That's an yeah, they are fun. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I'd say out of all the animals we work with, beavers are probably the most interesting and sometimes the most challenging. The thing with beavers, people think they see them on TV and on the commercials and so forth, and they think, oh, they're cute and cuddly, but actually a beaver is one of the meanest animals. Uh, one time we were letting an 80-pound beaver go, the next day I know I turn around and the beaver's chasing me and they're trying to tag me. So as cute as they look, they're actually really, really mean. Yeah, it scared me. <laughs> uh, okay. Get the squirrels off the roof. Well, see, so you want to climb up the ladder, I'll hand the squirrels to you. Okay. This is about as far as I go with a roof like this. <laughs> in these boots anyway. Man, you got the whole family? Oh, there's still more. The whole fam family. Good catch. No! <laughs> you scared me. Steep. Oh my god, I know you would never throw a squirrel. Apparently. How about this one? Uh, you want to take that one? No. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me put it don't fall. Oh, Got no. pee all over you. Oh, come on. <laughs> I should have worn different shoes. 
slowly. <laughs> Awkwardly. Yay! <laughs> this is mom. Right here. Oh, you smell like peanut butter. Hi, mama. And here's two of her babies. Okay, baby. She's nice and big. Hello? Yeah, hi. This is Brad from Wildlife Control. Oh, hi. Hi there. I just wanted to know I picked the uh, squirrels up. You actually had a mom and uh, two babies. So you're probably going to have another maybe two or three more. Oh, wow. So was this, there was, oh, there was more than one animal in the cage? No, there was three traps and all three were full. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you had a mom and two babies. Oh, I see what you're saying. Holy cow. Yeah, because I saw the one really moving around. I couldn't really see. The other one was just kind of like, you know, kind of standing there, like not happy. But okay, so there's probably more of that. Yeah, like, yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah, you'll have probably two more. Oh wow! Oh, so yeah, by the time you get back home, you'll probably see uh, another one or two, and just call me. I'll pick them up tomorrow. Okay. All Thank right. You so much. No problem. Talk to you later. Great job. Thanks, Thank you. Brad. Bye. See you. Bye. Here, I like this question though. Is it harder to deal with the wildlife or the public? The public for sure. Oh yeah, 100%. Oh my gosh. People suck. <laughs> Not all people suck. I mean, because there's a lot of nice people, but there are some crazies out there. The crazy lady one time, I had a raccoon in a trap and uh, she was throwing full candy bars. I remember that. She was actually throwing cans of pop that were unopened. Full cans, unopened. Yeah, up to these raccoons on a roof at the trap, like they're gonna reach out, open the can of pop, and have a drink in the chair. <laughs> she was a weird one. All right. Down that way. Through this way. Grab that saw. You might even drop inside the wall, I'm not sure. I'm gonna grab the trap just in case. This is hopefully where the birthing process will begin. What's up? <laughs> the birthing process. One to babies out, one by one. <laughs> Drops down on the wall. I hear him. Oh, I hear him. Run behind my seat and grab the mirror. Right, I don't see it. Where is it? The little pocket on my driver's seat. I just stuck my hand in there and freaking sliced my finger off it. With what? I don't know. Look at this. This right here is the hardest part of the job. The owies and the cuts and bruises. And Brad gets the majority of them, but I am not without. Oh man, they're like way down the wall. Are they? But they're way down here. I hear them now. Okay. Yay! You don't take them out with your hand, do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, I don't need it. Do they have a cage for that? No. Hello, little dust covered baby. Oh, my God. I can't believe you're talking to these guys. No, take a picture. How many are in there? I think three or four. This one's spicy. Hold on, Brad. This one's spicy. Oh, so is this one. Oh, oh shut up. Yeah. Come here. Yeah, oh yeah, that was done for sure. Just three of them? Yep, that's it. What are they mostly got? Usually two <laughs> Get him off my head. Usually three or four. Oh, look at him covering his eyes. <laughs> the best part of the job is this because look at how cute they are. And we've got mommy in the truck, so we get to reunite them. And then they get to go out and be wild and not be in people's houses. So we're saving people and animals, actually. Brad, what's so the hardest part of the job? We don't know, but we're trying to do things with her yapping and yapping and yapping. That's oh, about sorry. the hardest part. But that's what I do best. I talk. Save an off button. <laughs> yeah, the hardest part is always dealing with the babies. The moms, they can always catch like right away, but the babies are usually the hard part. But it wasn't too bad. It'd make two holes to find them because the uh, sound was echoing up through the ceiling. It made it sound like they're on top, but they were actually down the wall, which is this is a really uncommon spot. But they're gone, so <laughs> we're good. Brad has to tie his shoes. I don't have to. I just slip them on. <laughs> it's faster and easier. We got to get you some slip on, Brad. You gotta be real stylish. <laughs> so my phone's been ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing. Literally, like yesterday. My phone rang probably every two minutes when I had a phone call coming in. <sighs> it's good and it's stressful, but Very it's good. Stressful. Hopefully we got a coyote. Did you get a call for that? Yeah, I put traps in. There was uh, baby coyotes in, in somebody's backyard. 
I guess the mom was around a little bit, but now they haven't seen the mom. So maybe something happened to her. But yeah, I put three traps in and then I uh, got a possum in one. Just take them, let go. Then we relocate them to a really, really, really big woods where they would be better off, you know? That's like wasted food right there. <laughs> oh, poor thing. There's like a lot of dead scrub. Ooh, got in my hair. I'm gonna try to get one trap over the top of the hole. And block it up. You can't see all the way back to where they are. Mm -mm. So one tried to dig this out and put a trap in and block it all off. Yeah. They'll eat it. They'll eat it? I don't know. Ah, uh, whatever, any of it, all of it. Okay. Kind of. Here, honey. Here's the other side. Do you need another one of those or not? Um, just something else to block this off. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I forgot about the squirrel. I almost stepped on it. <laughs> you. you need another one or no? Nah, it should be enough. Oh my goodness. There. <laughs> That'll work. Ew. Oh, it's cold and soft. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. You want to make garbage can? Ew. I don't know. Ew. <laughs> Just love it. They would have ate it. Oh, that's gross. They're not, gonna, food. they're not gonna eat it if they're in the trap. Oh, I know, but something else would have ate it. You know what? Just put it in that blue can. Yeah, I'll tell my husband it's back there. Okay. There yeah. you go. Yeah, it's just like garbage. <laughs> but it was squishy. <laughs> <laughs> That holds everything in, just to be clear here. It's a mess. Chuck, organize and clean. There. Okay, you get that half. I'll get this half. Sure you can handle it? <laughs> Don't break a nail. I did it, but do you want to lock it? Oh, you're good at that. <laughs> wow. You're a pro. Yeah, okay, let's be serious now. Okay. What do you think is the hardest part of the job? Listen to you yap for 12 hours a day. <laughs> I think it's pretty rough. <laughs> true. <laughs> I have to stop and take you to the bathroom every hour. I have to stop and get you lunch every half hour. Um, Starbucks. I can't help it. I'm high maintenance, but I mean, like, really. <laughs> that would be the hardest part. So I'm the hardest part of the job? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I had to point the finger. <laughs> All right. No, really. The babies are the hardest. These are hard to find. Yeah. And they're never easy to get to. You always got to take something apart. It's never just go up there in the middle of the attic, everyone goes, oh, they're gonna be in the middle of the attic. They're never in the middle of the attic. They're always in the hardest to get to places where you either have to cut them out or crawl into a wall or you know, a really tight, stinky little cramped little space. So the babies are definitely the hardest. Yeah, that's true. Even the coyote babies were hard. You had to crawl all the way under yeah, that, that porch. Horrible. Yeah, that was bad. And then going in there, not knowing that the mom was actually in there first, putting my head in, going head first and thinking I could get bit, that was pretty rough. That's scary. Okay, this is honest. One of the hardest parts about the job is watching you do things that scare me to death. Like just like everything. Yeah, like everything. <laughs> no, like going on the roof, the really tall, high roofs, and when you stand on top of chimneys, that scares the crap out of me. Over 30 years, haven't died yet. Well, don't say I that. I got it down. The one time with the beaver, when you went underwater, that scared the crap out of me. Chance I had to take. So you scare the crap out of me, so you're the hardest Sometimes part I do it on purpose. I mean, it's always on accident. <laughs> See, you are the hardest part. <laughs> it's you, not me. Huh. Hey Brad, it's Siska B in Lombard. Uh, we already have a baby in the trap and kind of concerns me a little bit because I know it's going to storm tonight. She's so I don't know if you should come out at this late of a time to mm. pick her up or not, but Would there is a baby in the trap. Bye. Yeah. It might have happened, that thing might have been full of water. The mom might have moved out. And left two babies. And then one baby didn't want to dive through the water to get out. And then just got stranded there. Is that it? Yeah. I'll help you. Good idea, 50%. Yep, doing my 50%. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Ooh, that was scary. Oh, that was so cute. What? It's a fox? It's a fox. Oh my god, it's a baby fox. Yeah, that's not a coyote. Fox? Yes. It's a fox. It's a baby yeah, fox. Might have been a fox. Oh, they are so cute. No, it's a fox. It's a it's red a, fox. It's a baby fox. So that kind of changes things a little bit. Yeah, look at. And they look a little bit like coyotes, but. Sure but. Oh yeah, yeah, positive. Oh, yeah, he, see his black legs, and he's more orange. He's got black ears. 
He's got a little white tip on his tail. I said it might have been a fox. Yeah. You know. Hi, you know. baby fox. I, I love baby foxes. <laughs> but the mom just moved them all out, and then this guy was stuck because he wouldn't go through the water. So you get. Uh, That's what I'm guessing. You're pretty, pretty busy then. This time of year. Oh, yeah, that's his mug. And oh, I haven't posted poop, it on yet. Ooh, that is poop. <laughs> All right, yeah, we actually have a whole bunch more. Yeah, oh, a whole bunch more to do. There, sorry. <laughs> I was supposed to be in Bart, I was supposed to be in Dundee before seven. That's not happening. Yeah. An average day, like today, between 30 and 40 stops. Uh, there's times when we have over 100 houses going at a time. And uh, I've done 50 to 60 stops a day. But I try to keep it under, like 30 to 40 is a pretty comfortable day. I mean, it's really, really busy and it's hustling nonstop, but I can efficiently do it. When I have days when we have 50 to 60, I mean, literally you can work from sun up till way past sundown and roll back in at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And uh, try not to do that, but you know, if the demand is there and you have to do it, then you keep on going. You guys ever have any of those Yeah, I mean, up in the attics all the time. You get, uh, say, like a raccoon with babies. If I go to grab a baby raccoon and it starts squealing and squawking, well, mom's instincts come running after you. So a lot of times, uh, have a baby in my hand, the mom would come to attack me. The worst case scenario I ever had with a close call, I had a guy working for me, and his job was only to go up there to hold the light. He's kind of my gopher. So he was holding the light, his first day on the job, and I was going in after mom raccoon and babies. And the minute I got the mom inside the catch pole, it growled one time. The minute it growled, my guy dropped the light, fell through the ceiling, left me up in the dark. So I'm up there with a mad mom raccoon, and uh, make a long story short, I was inside a hole, where she couldn't get out unless she went through where I was. So she started clawing and biting my face. And I'm up there screaming, yelling, I can't see anything, I'm in the dark. My guy's on the floor screaming, yelling because he was hurt. And uh, then I went to jerk my head up, got stuck on a nail. So I had a raccoon claw my face apart, bite me, and my head stuck in a nail, and my guy on the floor screaming and yelling because he was in pain from falling through the ceiling. So that was probably the worst one. That one sticks out in my uh, mind the most. So. And that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. We got fired. First I, day on the job. Yeah. I just want to be clear that that was before me because if it was me, that would have never happened because I would have never yes. never screamed and dropped the flashlight. No. I would, and I would not fall through the ceiling. <laughs> um, well, maybe not. But <laughs> so that one sticks on my head. But that and uh, muskrats, they get kind of mean. We let them go and a lot of times they'll charge you and run after you and bite you. Muskrats are muskrats incredibly are mean. mean. They have the worst attitudes and tempers of probably any of the animals we deal with, except for mink. Mink are super mink. mean. And they are just the coolest little streamlined animals. They're they just smell like, worse than anything in the world. Yeah. Ten times worse smelling than a skunk. They have a musk that they release, and it's nasty. It's really awful. Yeah, I'm actually, like, it makes my gag reflex <laughs> <laughs> when I think about it, it's really bad. But they are really cute. It's amazing because they're so cute and you wouldn't think something that cute could be that fierce. But they, are, they definitely are. You wouldn't want to put your fingers anywhere near the trap. My close call that I consider a close call was we had a bat in a house. It was in these people's bedroom. I picked up this purse that I had picked up earlier. Well, it must have like probably been in a purse before and then crawled out when we moved them earlier so it was under the purse now because it wasn't there earlier and it flew straight at my face and then the bat and I thought the bat was going straight into my face and I thought for sure I was getting bit and I thought for sure I was going to the hospital to get shots and well at the last second it must have like amazing maneuver and all ability it like it went straight to my face and then shoot straight down to the floor and I was like, oh, I was freaking, I was like, my heart was racing. And it's not that I'm afraid of bats, but I don't want to be bit by one. And it could have rabies. So to me, that was like the closest call I ever had. That was a pretty close call, don't you <laughs> Come on, let me have it. Close-ish. <laughs> Close-ish. Close enough. I really enjoy, I love working with my husband. I think it's like the best thing ever. How about you, honey? <laughs> no comment? No. <laughs> you know what I love most about being a two-person team, though? Is I get to spend time with you. <laughs> I love you. You spend time with me in bed, 12 hours sleeping. Yeah. No, I don't sleep for 12 hours. Or whatever, I wish. Hours. Eight, eight bed, that's about six hours, actually. Yeah. Sleeping. Working with my best friend. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Man, that tea's starting to hit me. I might have to like go to the little girl side of the woods. Oh, if we go all the way back, take me to the outhouse. 
I'm desperate. When nature calls, nature calls. It's getting too late to let the animals go. Okay. We're almost there. Yeah, I have to. My truck's so full. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you get this many. You have to. They all want out of the trap. You can't blame them. They're in the trap all day long. They want to get out. All right. This weather really sucks. This is one of the hard parts about the job too. I mean, it's not hard, but it's really not fun. You have to work rain or shine no matter what. You have to take care of the animals. So we want to do those first? Yeah, look them. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. This way. Bye, Mom. Oh, there you go. <laughs> working in the rain. Working long days, working in the rain, going in at nighttime and letting animals go. I mean, it's not that bad. It's miserable and it's rainy and you're tired at the end of the day. You're working, I don't know how many hours you put in the day. It's been a long day. It's very tiring, but it's worth it. Come on, buddy, come on. Out you go. No, not that way. This way to freedom. Possums aren't real bright. This way. Come on. Um. <laughs> Overnight. I'll let this one go. You're putting her baby with her? Yeah. yeah we're kind of fast, they don't jump out. Yeah. She's already grabbing them. Oh, look at her, look at her. Yeah, she's a good mom. She is a good mom. She's already hugging them and holding them. I'll let her go in the look morning. Look at her. Really she's like, that's my baby. Get her acclimated again. Watch her. Come grab them. Look at him, she's got it in her mouth. She's a good mama. Yeah, I could probably let her go now, she's probably fine, but I'm gonna keep her overnight. Yeah, but it's not raining, it's better. Just to make sure. Look at how good she's just picking up her baby. <laughs> you, you're a good That's mommy. That's a good sign. You're a good right, mommy. Let me get her out of the rain. She's had enough. Yeah. These guys are bigger, the babies are bigger. They've been nursing all day. They yeah, get them early. they're fine. All right, last up is taking the mom and babies to the hollow tree. All right. Okay. Grab that light. Yep. You gotta watch the poison ivy. There's definitely 100% there's poison ivy. Oh. I am really, really allergic to poison ivy. Like, I... Follow me, I'll show you. So bad. That's, if I could say one thing was the worst thing, it would be that. <laughs> oh, man. It's a mud. Yeah, we don't want to be around if she 
charges back. Alright, let's go. Come on, Mom's already brown here. She jumped. Go, go, okay. go, go. Hurry up, she's coming. Oh, Jesus! That sucks. Get dirty. <laughs> I'm really glad that I'm in this business with my husband because we are here to be able to help the people and the animals. We are Brad and Katie of Suburban Wildlife Control in Chicago, Illinois, and we thank you for watching.